good morning everybody as uh, promised this is the extra lecture on uh, file handling that i promised to send send to all of you so in this uh, short lecture we will be uh, dealing with uh, how to handle files uh, in c programs and this will allow you to read and write to files and we'll also uh, show a simple example so let's uh, let's read our very normal program that we are uh, used to uh, yeah we are used to writing which is uh, just scanning something from the uh, uh, scanning something from the user and printing it to the standard output so scanning it from the standard input and uh, reading and printing it to the uh, display or the standard output this program is very familiar in fact uh, towards the end we are coming to the kind of the first program but uh, let's recall a few things that uh, that uh, we want to talk about so one thing is that we have said that this scanf does not allow us to uh, take in uh, arrays or character or, or strings which contain the space right so as soon as you print in the space you will uh, this will i mean it will just take in whatever is there till the first space so that was one small part the second is you are always reading it from whatever the user is entering into the keyboard so this is this is the familiar program but we are we are noting two things about it one that this scanf was not allowing us to enter spaces that was a small thing that we will resolve as a side effect but uh, more importantly we are always reading from the user uh, whatever the user inputs rather than having it uh, having it as a as something that uh, yeah ha as having something that we can read from the file so uh, this program as we know is going to read it from the keyboard and write it to the monitor write it to the standard output or you will see it on the monitor or your uh, uh, display so uh, in some sense this what it, this is doing is uh, or internally what is happening is this uh, keyboard and monitor are viewed as resources and this, uh, these are actually used to uh, interact with the user in terms of the input and the output and files are a different uh, way to uh, interact with the user that is we can read from a file the input and write to the file an output with which the user we can communicate with the user so what we want to do is first take this very simple program make it write read from a file and write to a file and then take uh, some small other examples okay so let's first understand this program in a slightly different language so uh, before that i what i want to mention is that c does not provide any inbuilt um, functions for input output but the standard library uh, provides uh, uh, so, so the li this the library in the standard library we have been using this scanf and printf which have been implemented and these are very useful functions for us to communicate and this input output is performed with what are called as streams and streams uh, you may be aware already is a sequence of characters and for every c program we have these three streams which are implicitly available to us these are the standard input standard output and standard error without referring to them explicitly we have been uh, using them because these streams are open for us these are available for us to use whenever we are uh, executing a c program so when uh, scanf is reading it is reading from a stream uh, the, which is called the std in and uh, we when printf is writing it is going to write to this uh, std out which is again a stream and these streams are opened for us already so we are not doing any work in terms of opening these streams and uh, getting handles to them and so on but the question is can we write write or read from arbitrary streams and that is the goal which will allow us to uh, interact with different files so before we go to interacting with different files let's rewrite this original program that we have on the first uh, slide in a different language of streams so for that we are going to use uh, 
a slightly slightly different function that uh, C provides us, which is which is an analog of the scanf function. So, so we are very well aware of the scanf function. The scanf function has the following prototype. It has the format specifier followed by the addresses of address of the variables, and there can be multiple. Uh, variables that you can give in to the scanf uh, function and we have seen several usages of this so scanf is something that we know so then analogous function to scanf is what is called as an f scanf and this f comes for the uh, file part of it so the f scanf function uh, has the following prototype it has a stream pointer and we'll say what a stream pointer is uh, it has the same format specifier percent %d, percent %f, percent %c, percent %s and so on and then the address of the variable. So the remaining part is very much similar to uh, the this uh, the scanf function. However, we also want a, a stream pointer and what is this uh, stream pointer? It is uh, it, it it is of the type file star. So what is this file star? This is also made available to you. You don't have to worry about it. You now that we are learning structures in our class, we uh, this is uh, some structure that is defined for us. Why is the struct uh, keyword not there? That can be omitted by doing something what is called as a type def. So that we are going to come to in our regular classes. So don't worry about that. But this is some type, which is a user defined data type, but that is being defined for you. And what you are saying is this stream pointer is a pointer to a type called file, which has been defined for us. Just like you are, we are defining user defined types, student, uh, point and rectangle and so on. So these are some things that are available to us. So uh, the file is something which is also made available to us and therefore we can define a pointer to this uh, type by saying file star and fptr is my variable name. So what I want to, uh, what, what I can do is Okay, sorry about this. There was some network issue at the end. So, uh, okay. So, uh, before we uh, give this to fscanf, that file uh, pointer or that fptr should be pointing to the appropriate stream if we are using some file. However, in case of uh, the standard input, the standard input is always available for us and therefore it is open for us. So, this std in is a special uh, pointer to a file which is the standard input and uh, that is available for us. So when we use this fscanf, we can use uh, use it with the standard input. So what we will do is we will slightly modify our original program to have the same thing that is there is a character buffer of size 100 and this is a character array as we are aware. But instead of saying scanf percent as buffer, what I'm doing is I'm using f scanf with the appropriate uh, stream, which is std in, and then I'm saying the same thing that I had said earlier. So instead of scanf, I'm using f scanf, and uh, therefore uh, now it is going to read it from the standard input, but I'm explicitly saying that I'm reading from the standard input. So you may expect that with a similar uh, analog, you are going to replace printf and that is what exactly we are going to do. We are going to replace printf with an f printf, which will again have uh, um, uh, it replaced with a, a rep will have a third argument, which will be a stream pointer. So 
the function analogous to scanf is going uh, printf is going to be f printf and it is going to print to a particular stream and uh, this uh, again as we said that the standard output is available for us for writing so this the printf was implicitly using the standard output the f printf is explicitly using the standard output by saying that uh, uh, i mean we can use the standard output explicitly by uh, saying f printf you can also use other streams but for the moment we are just modifying the simple program so what we we are doing is we are taking the buff we are we are having that buffer we are reading something from the standard input into this buffer uh, this this part of percent as buffer is very clear to you and we have introduced this uh, new thing which is stream pointer now what you would have done with printf what we have done earlier is saying printf percent as buffer instead of that we are explicitly saying print it to the standard output uh, and then using two different functions which are f scanf and f printf so the program behaves exactly the same that as it was behaving it takes input from the user it prints output to your screen or monitor but uh, the functions that are used are different they are f scanf and f printf which allow us to be aware of the fact that we are in fact dealing with two streams which are the standard input and the standard output okay so having said this what we have done is got introduced to this notion of uh the streams and we know how our uh the usual input and output streams behave and how to access them now uh what we want to okay so i just want to mention that the standard error is uh by default map to the screen or the monitor and therefore by default the error messages are also uh written to uh, the monitor or the screen and uh, the other streams are appropriately mapped for example the standard input is mapped map to the keyboard okay so now with this what we would like to do is read and write from a file so uh, for that we need to be able to handle file uh, i mean handle files and see handles files as streams so uh, we cannot simply say that okay take this file and read it unless we set it up correctly to be as a stream therefore we need to uh, open open the file and open the file in a particular way and therefore uh, have a pointer pointing to that appropriate stream so uh, what we are going to do is introduce this new function which is called as f open and f open has the following prototype it takes the file name with the appropriate path so if it is in your local directory i mean the current directory you don't have to worry about it otherwise you'll have to give relative path or absolute path based on the directory where it is present and then there is also a mode and there are there are several modes that are possible in the introduction part we are just going to talk about the read and write mode which is r and w and the return type of that f open function is a is a pointer to this type which is called as file so this is file star so this is convenient because we wanted a pointer to uh, i mean we wanted a pointer to file star so uh, the usage of this is going to be uh, f open my data file dot text let's assume that my data file dot text is something that is available and then you are saying that this is opened in read mode which says that you are not going to be able to write it but you are going to be able to read from it now uh, this returns uh, this returns a pointer and this is what we we will call it as our stream from which we will be able to read and write so um, let us see the usage of this uh, with uh, with f open and uh, f printf so uh, so let's say that we are uh, we are interested in uh, reading uh, re reading something from this file which is my file dot text so we will open this file which is uh, which 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 is uh, this my file dot text and uh, It, it it we are opening it in read mode 
and note that we are assigning the return value to what we have called as f in f in is a variable of type five star which we have defined and of course we have this buffer which we have conveniently taken and uh, note that the file opening may not go through because it may be the case that the you have given the wrong file name it doesn't find the file to be opened in which case f in may be uh, set to null or it will be in fact null so therefore it is it is the uh, caller's responsibility to check that in fact fn is not equal to null so if fn is equal to equal to null then you don't want to proceed so therefore you you are not going to read it and uh, so uh, in this in this way you are just going to uh, quit this program if it, if fn happens to be null if it does not happen to be null, note that because we, we here we should have had int main uh, so that it return it allows you to return something. So if you return from here, then you are not going to execute these lines. Otherwise, you are going to read one line using uh, f scanf, uh, read a uh, read till the first space and then uh, write it to the standard output. So. For f printf, we have not opened any file. We are in fact just reading, writing it to the standard output. Only f scanf we have modified. F scanf for that the first input we have taken a, a pointer to the or we have obtained the pointer to a file which we have opened in the read mode. So this is something that is new where we have used this f open function, which gets us a pointer to a file for which we are we are giving the name and the mode which is the read mode and note that the file permissions also are important because you may or may not be able to open the file in a particular mode if you do not have write permissions typically files will have read permissions so you should be able to open files in read mode so study this program try it out and uh, make sure that you understand the components of it okay so uh, so this uh, is a final modification where you are not only reading from a file but writing to another file which is uh, so this my file remains the same this part is the same but you are also having an out file which you are able to open it in write mode so this is something that uh, 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 you should be able to do in your current directory that is you should have write permissions for that and assuming you have all the permissions, then you should be able to open this file in write mode, which is called as out file. And uh, it is going to open this file in write mode. You have to be careful about opening uh, files which are already present. Uh, there are also other modes which are called as append mode and so on. Uh, we won't go into that in the introductory lecture itself because otherwise it becomes too much to talk about several modes. But then uh, instead of writing to std out that we were doing earlier, we are now writing it to f out and this will take whatever you have read into this box, write it into this uh, uh, f out, um, uh, sorry, in this file which is out file dot text and you can check this out that after this if you open the f out file dot text using some editor you should be able to see whatever was the uh, word or something that you had written into the my file. However, it is not reading all the lines of my file and uh, writing them to uh, writing them to uh, the output file. Note the use of F close. It is typically a good idea to close the files that you have opened. Uh, and in fact, after this, you should not be able, you should not be using uh, using f scanf or f printf into f in or f out so after you have closed it you should not be using that if you want to re-read re the file or rewrite it to the file you should be opening it able to write at the appropriate place so uh, what i want to want you to do is try out this program and see what it does for a particular my file that you have written write the file with uh, whatever you want to write and then see what is the out file dot text okay so uh, this this was the basic introduction
now uh, i want to go to one another small part which is helpful in writing programs which is uh, which is the uh, which is the way in which you can pass parameters to this function main so till now we have not passed parameters to main uh, we have always just said main into bracket i mean main and then empty braces that is it does not take in any parameters so uh, okay so uh, okay so before i go to this i i want to show this this is the desired behavior of a, a, a thing that i want to uh, write that is let us say that i have a lab eight uh, dot text file and i want to copy it into a, a file called copy of lab eight dot text so uh, in fact there is a unix command which you must be aware which says cp if the lab eight dot text is something which is available for me then i can say cp lab eight dot text space copy of lab eight dot text so copy of lab eight dot text will be exactly the same of same as um, lab eight dot text instead of that what i would like to implement is a function or is a sorry a program which i would like to call as my copy lab eight uh, my, my copy a uh, program and in, instead of calling cp i should be able to say my copy lab eight dot text copy of lab eight dot text right so the first thing that we would like to know is how do you rename the executable to a different name that is easy i think we have seen this earlier if you use this command gcc minus o so let's say that we write a program which is called as copy program dot c and uh, that program we have not yet written but let's say we write the program called copy program dot c and then we say gcc minus o uh, my copy then you will create an executable called my copy now these two are some things that are parameters these are the input i mean the reading file from which you want to read and the output file in which you want to write and these are two arguments to main that you are passing so how do you pass this is something that we have never seen and that is uh, that is what we are going to see in the next part of the uh, lecture so uh, in fact the main function can be defined with no parameters the way we have been defining it or with two parameters called the one which is an integer typically we i mean these are names that you can give these are the uh, these are the formal parameter names so you can change them but typically they, they this is called as argc for argument count the number of arguments so this is an integer which is called as argc and an in, and an array of character pointers typically called as argv so again these names are some things that you can uh, change and modify however this is the standard that has been there so that is why i am introducing you uh, to these concepts so we will use these so we will see an example but uh, before that even so suppose you did not have uh, uh, these two i mean these two parameters then what you would have possibly done is possibly uh, read the two names with scanf the name of the input file and name of the output file and opened it instead what we are going to do is write a program which hard codes the name so what do i mean by hard code hard codes it just puts these name explicit names explicitly so instead of saying that earlier what i had said is this my file dot text instead of that i am saying lab 8 dot text and copy of lab 8 so this this part has not changed right so this this part is similar except the names of the files have been explicitly hard coded which could have been read from the standard input and uh, then written here but nevertheless that that doesn't uh, that is not the important part now you are going to also uh, check whether the streams that you have been returned are indeed valid streams that they are that that is they are not null if one even one of them is null then we are going to uh, print an error message this printf remember that it is writing to the standard output you could have replaced this by saying f printf std out but that's okay and then you may also want to send a return code at this moment we are sending zero but you may want to send a return minus one or something okay now 
what we are going to do is not read only some part of the file in fact we are going to read the whole file so this function which is f get s is going to allow us to read uh, read the read from this stream the so the f get s function has three parameters the first is a, a character array or a pointer to a character the next is the maximum count that you you would want to read and the third is the stream from where you want to read so this f in is the stream from which you want to read so that is opened in read mode so that is good for us and it is not null it is going to read as long as the fall one of the following things happen that is you reach what is called as end of file in which case uh, it will stop reading or you uh, you find that uh, there is a new line in which case it stops uh, i mean it's it stops reading uh, or it, uh, it it sees that the maximum characters have been read that is this i mean the buffer is only able to take in 1000 so you have read uh, 990 suppose you have read n minus 1 characters then there is no more space to re put into the buffer because you have to terminate it with a slash 0 therefore you are not going to read any further so one of these three things happens it is going to terminate and it is going to return whatever it has read that is whatever it has read meaning let's say that there is a line this is a file then it will re read all the file till assuming that there is a new line after this it will read all of that file and then return a pointer to this string which is this is a file and therefore that pointer is not going to be null therefore uh, what we are going to do is while we are we are able to read lines from this f stream which is f which is opened i mean which is available for us which is f in we are going to keep reading it into the buffer and then whatever is into the buffer we are going to put it into the stream f out uh, so this is these are two different functions which we are introducing one which is f get s the other which is f put s these are different from f scan f and f uh, uh, f print f these are allowing us to read lines and lines which have which also have space spaces in them and therefore this is this will also allow us to uh, get over our issue that we had that we were unable to read lines which had space so you could have done f get s buffer thousand and std in in which case you can actually read read a line which uh, which contains spaces so that apart uh, once you read this line you are going to if it is not null the return value return value is not null that is it has read something then you are going to put that into the buffer uh, put that put that into the f out stream whatever is the content of the buffer so uh, there are two more functions which are uh, which we are introducing f get s and f put s and um, you can also ask are there analogs of this which are get s and put s yes there are analogs of that but it is safer to use f get s and f get s especially because it takes care of this value which is uh, i mean the maximum value that it can read so you have to give it the maximum value so the buffer has value uh, I mean, it has space to hold 999 characters, uh, uh, character array or a string of 999 length. So you're giving 1000. So as, as long as it reads 999 or the new line comes or end of file comes, it will. Uh, so if one of this happens, it is going to uh, return. Otherwise, it is going to keep on reading the characters, right? So this. Uh, is a very useful function so f get s will allow us to read from this stream which we have conveniently opened uh, for this file which is labid.txt and then we are copying uh, it into the appropriately named file so this this program is fine the only thing that it doesn't do is it does not take in as an argument the uh, two names that is the labid.txt and copy of labid these are still uh, these are not arguments to main these are in fact com these are in fact inputs to main which are like uh, you will do using uh, i mean you could have done it using scanf but you are in fact hard coding them here 
so now we are going to get around and uh, use this this uh, feature of allowing uh, ha or having parameters for main which are argc and argb and uh, so the prototype of main will look like this int is the return type which is the default return type which we have been many times faulting but then there is int argc which is the number of arguments and int argv which is the uh, which is a, a character which is a, an array of uh, pointers to characters right so this is something which will contain the different arguments that we want to send okay so uh, let us see first an example before we modify that program so let us say that we are running our normal program uh, which we we did not have any uh, um, a, any i mean in, we just are running dot slash a dot out so you compile this program this program is written in this way but you are not going to give any command line arguments then what happens so every program has at least one input which is the name of the executable and this name of the executable is in fact present in what is called as argv0 so this if you print f percent uh, uh, this this program is always going to give you one i mean even if you do not send uh, do not send any argument so just comp write this program compile it and say dot slash a dot out and we will uh, get this so maybe just in the interest of uh, everybody i will just do it on the repl dot it i i do not have anybody to tell me whether it is in fact sharing my screen but i am hoping that it does share my screen okay so uh, it seem to have i'll just So let me just uh, yeah, go to this class three and uh, yeah, great. So let me just make a directory for files. So as you see here, there is this program which is one dot c. I'm going to Okay, so for some reason this is extremely slow. So uh, let me see if this Vim opens. Okay, so uh So somehow it is, yeah, okay, great. So it has allowed me finally to, yeah, okay. 
the system is extremely slow the network is extremely slow so percent d so i cannot print args arg uh, v directly so i'm just going to print this and i'm just going to put a slash in here so i hope it does compile okay so this is the program which is 1.c and if i just run a dot out it is giving me one this one is obtained because i have um, uh, i always have at least one parameter to main which is this uh, the name of the executable of the program and if you want to print the name of the executable then you can say that or print the name of the executable is argv of 0 so argv of 0 will always contain the name of the executable executable and the remaining parameters will be contained in argv of 1 argv of 2 argv of 3 as a string and so if you want to pass parameters which are integers you will have to convert these strings into integers so this part i will leave it to you to try it out and if you do gcc minus o some other name uh, some other name that is you want to give your executable then that name will be printed out when you print out argv of zero so that is something that you you should try it out let me see if it quickly allows me to do that okay so let me just say printf percent s argv of zero And uh, let us do this first without any change. So it should print out two things. One is uh, the number of uh, arguments. The second is the name of the argument. And let's say if I if I change this to GCC minus O, my exec, this is the name of my executable, uh, 1.c, which is the name of the program. Then if I run dot slash a dot out, Oh, sorry so i should not run a, a dot out i should run my exec and it will print out that the name of the executable is indeed my exec so this is something that you can try it out okay good so uh, having said that how many arguments can you pass to main in fact you can pass as many arguments as you like and uh, how do we access them as i said arg, arg uh, v of zero is going to be the first argue uh, is going to argue of zero is going to be the first argument and it is always going to be the name of the executable and the remaining arguments are there in argv of one two three all the way up to arg arg c minus one and therefore you can uh, print out the arguments to this program by running a loop which runs from zero to arg c minus one and keeps printing those arguments in this order so the zeroth as i said is the name of the executable these are all uh, strings so all of these arguments are strings even if you pass one two three four as the parameters it is going to take them as strings and then you will have to take the responsibility of converting them so having this feature for us now this makes it very helpful this was our original program where we had hard coded the names of the inputs and input and output file now it is fairly easy to convert this to a program which takes command line arguments now we have the same program where we have the file pointers which are f in and f out uh, which are pointers to the uh, type file and then we are checking because it, it has to have uh, uh, it has to have uh, two parameters therefore arc c has to be equal to three because the z first parameter or the zeroth index into R B is going to be the name then the first is going to be the uh, input file and the second is going to be the output file so if uh, arg c is less than three in fact it, you should say if it is not equal to three then you should uh, print out this error message which which is usage my copy source file and destination file you will see such um, such as such messages at different in different unix uh, pro unix uh, 
commands that you have. This, this is a typical way of writing error messages. Usage is this, so please modify it and use it in the correct way. And then F in, uh, F open, instead of having the uh, labate.txt, we are in fact going to have the argv of one, which is a character, uh, I mean, which is a string or a character array. It's, remember, it's a pointer to a character and that we are opening in read mode. And that is the, that is the agreement between the program and the user that the first parameter is going to be the one from which you are going to read. The second parameter is going to be the one to which you write. And that is in argv of two. Again, these may or may not be opened correctly. Therefore, you should always check out whether these are correctly open for you by checking whether f in is equal to equal to null or f out is equal to equal to null, then it is either input or output has been erroneously opened or it, it was not possible to open it. And the remaining program is the same. So there is no change in that. Once you have these two open, then you can always uh, read from that file the way we have read using f get s and then we are going to put it into the buffer, uh, put it into the f out, whatever is in the buffer. Finally, we are going to close both the streams that is f in and f out. Sorry, that part is gone. But um, this is a program which almost gives you the uh, kind of uh, simulation of the uh, command which is cp file name to another file name which, which allows you to copy one file into another. This is a Unix command. So we have kind of, we have written a C program which simulates the Unix command, which is CP. And of course you can uh, try to simulate a command, let's say string cat or uh, not string cat, sorry, cat command, which allows you to cat the file content. So let me just show you what we have simulated. So uh, let's say that this file, which is cat1.c, cat is a command which says, I mean, sh show, show me the contents of the file in the, on the uh, terminal. If I do cp1.c to 2.c, then the same contents of 1.c are going to be copied to 2.c. That, that you should be aware. Nobody uses command line parameters, command line uh, interface now, but it's a very, very efficient and quick interface rather than clicking around things. And uh, so this same content has been copied into 2.c, but this we are using the Unix command, which is cp. If you write this program, my, my copy, I mean, the way I have written it here, then you, and call it my copy, then you will have the same interface. That is my copy uh, 1.c to 3.c will do the same task that cp does for you. So in some way we have simulated a Unix command uh, which deals with files with, with a very, very short introduction to uh, how to open files, how to close files using the given functions that are available for us. So uh, to summarize, uh, the learnings in this lecture are that the C treats input outputs via or deals with input output via these streams. And there are three streams which are available for any C program, the standard input, standard output, and the standard error. And we can open other files for reading and writing using the F open command. We have explored it to a very, very limited extent, which is with the read and the write uh, modes. There are several other modes, which is, if you are interested, you can look it up. The F get s and F put s functions are some things which are useful, which uh, allow us to read and write the stream line by line. And very importantly, we have seen that the main function can have arguments and these can be very helpful for us to uh, pass arguments to the main and not take them using the scanf. This can be files that can be given or any other argument, but it these are taken as strings and then it is your responsibility to convert them if you need as integers or whatever you want them to be. Okay, so with this, I'll stop this uh, discussion on files. Uh, if you have any questions, we will take it up during our live class.